Hey guys, how are you? This is Oscar. I am uh, just getting back from Florida, actually sitting here at the uh, train station parking lot where I left my vehicle for, for the time I was away and uh, just had some thoughts on, on the way back and, and just so incredibly happy about how amazing and blessed I am that I'm able to get up and go and travel when I need to, travel when I want to. I don't have a boss. I don't have to ask for vacation time. And I've been there, guys. I have been there for way, way, way too long where you don't have that freedom. And, uh, you know, a year ago when I decided to quit, um, you know, my career uh, to do something that I wanted to do, to take a chance on myself, to to expand my horizons, to use the skills uh, that I wasn't getting paid for. And um, it's been it's been quite, quite a trip. And uh, um Every time that I go to Florida, it's it's really a time to reflect on you know what what is it that's important to me and, and you know what are some of the things that I, I I want to achieve in life, things I haven't had the 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 right tools or the the right system to help me create uh, the life that I wanted. You know, working in corporate America is, is is great and for people that love their jobs, God bless you. We need you. There's products and systems and services that have to be uh, made available and and. and for you, for those that, that love their jobs and love what they do, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but for me, you know, 23 years of, of kind of doing uh, uh, different things, I, I came to a decision that uh, uh, being someone's employee for 23 years wasn't going to, uh, hadn't gotten me to where I wanted. And if I stayed another 20 years, it wasn't going to get me to where I wanted. And um, some of you may be feeling the same. I don't know. I don't know. But for me, when I go on these trips, it is an awakening. I, I, it, it's a chance for me to open my eyes and, and dream big again, to experience a lifestyle and hang out with people that I love being with on a daily basis, to to see so much beauty, the houses, oh, it's just amazing, so beautiful. And it says, hey, you know, one day I'd love to live in, in, in one of these type of houses. And... Uh, and again, like I said, we just you want to get out there. You want to put yourself out there and, and, and just get in your car and go drive around to, to the, a neighborhood that you, you would love to live in. Um, not something that you know you could afford. Go out and dream big. Go out and look, look at houses that you'd never, ever think that you could imagine having. But that's where everything starts. That's where your dreams and goals start. And that's kind of what leads me into, you know, why I'm making this video right now. Because, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's, I, I want to remind people. So in talking about this, I wanted to bring to you some information that I've been reading. And hopefully you find some value. So I'll start this with a question. If success is the what, dreams are the why. Dreams are the underlying purpose, and it's what fuels your hard work. It's what fuels your passion, your effort, and what drives us to keep going long after we should, could, or could have quit. You could agree that dreams and goals are the same thing. Both drive us. Goals, maybe a little more, because they imply a tangible target, things that we can actually get and see and feel. But if you go one step deeper, where do the goals come from in the first place? Here's a depressing stat of the day. And according to a 2014 study, only 6% of adults end up in careers that they wanted when they were kids. The study didn't examine why most of us don't land in those occupations that our childhood selves wanted. So what was your dream? <laughs> Not the one you had last night when you were asleep, but the one that keeps you awake during the day. A recent imagination report asked, almost 500 kids between the ages of 1 and 10 what they wanted to be when they wanted what they want to be when they grew up a doctor was the most popular profession for girls at about 16% followed by teaching teacher at 7% uh, among boys the most popular future job was pro athlete firefighter came in second and um, if I can remember this there Three to four year olds, I think the number one profession is superhero. <laughs> There's some other professions that really couldn't be categorized. Uh, they included kitty cat, dinosaur, hedge fund manager, and someone's personal favorite uh, when they were asked 
what do you want to be when you grow up? And they just said taller. <laughs> so, hey guys, this is refreshing and fascinating to think about how kids think about the adult world. So what age, at what age do we start to lose that? When does our mind lose that? When do we put limitations on ourselves? Think back to when you were a kid in your Superman cape and your parents had to convince you, don't jump off the roof. <laughs> Who were you when you were that little kid before you learned that gravity was real? Life happens. And at a young age, we start fighting the battle against reality. And then we wage war for the rest of our lives Reality says that based on the current sciences, based on the data, based on common sense, this is what your life is going to look like. Guess what doesn't help? People, friends, family, neighbors, and college advisors are straight up dream killers. If you even have supportive people in your life who foster your love of science, Someone will feel it's their duty to tell you that you can't achieve something, that you can't cure cancer using your chemistry set. Is it for your own good that they're telling you this stuff? Mm. Should we keep our dreams to ourselves to protect them? What would happen if we didn't listen to the naysayers? Realistic thinking can be the worst thing ever, especially for entrepreneurs. Do you think that realistic thinking let people like rapper Eminem stop from doing what he wanted to do? You think he had some people telling him he couldn't do it? Do you think it kept him from squashing his dreams to become the next LL Cool J when everybody was telling him that he couldn't do it and was doubting him? I think in 2018, Eminem had released nine studio albums and had received 15 Grammy Awards. He started a major motion picture about his life and won an Academy Award for Best Original Song. He started the Marshall Matters Foundation, which helps disadvantaged and at-risk youth, and now he has a net worth of about $190 million. Did you think realistic thinking stopped him? There's so many other examples like this that we can use. It takes, for example, Steve Jobs. Do you think realistic dreaming or realistic thinking stopped him when he dropped out of college in 1972 and then co-founded Apple in 1976? He wanted to put a computer in the hands of everyday people. Do you think realistic thinking stopped him when he was kicked out of his own company in 1985? He came back in 1997 to rescue it from bankruptcy and and in 2010, he built it into the world's most valuable company. He's got over 450 patents, and at his death, he's worth $10.2 billion. At the end of a commencement speech he gave at Stanford, he told graduates, don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the result of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice. Stay hungry, stay foolish. And by saying throw caution to the wind, I'm not saying, hey, drop off college. You know. So what I'm saying is that somewhere along the way, we put our Superman we put our Superman cape in a bag and stored it away somewhere. Why? Why do we put away our dreams? Well, there's a couple reasons why. That's because sometimes dreams can kill you. The first way they kill you is when you go after something and you don't get it, you don't achieve it. Then you become a cynic and you think, fuck, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not gonna dream anymore. I failed. I, I couldn't get what I wanted. How many of you have approached people who are cynical about a dream that you have? I guarantee you these people have a story where they've tried something before in their life and they failed and they became angry and cynical or they know somebody who might have lost everything and and then they thought shoot I'm not gonna try that I'm, I'm not gonna fail I'm not gonna look stupid in front of other people what if you have a bad relationship what, what if your marriage falls apart and you feel so burnt and so defeated that you vowed never 
ever to fall in love or go down that marriage road again. It can happen, but that's also a dream. The second way that dreams can kill you is that if you do achieve your dream, and then that's it, you stop there. You think, I don't have anything else to prove. You've reached your peak. You've mastered what you set out to do, and now the rest of your life is linear. If you don't continuously upgrade your dreams and get new dreams and pursue new dreams, what starts to happen after you achieve your major goal, you get your MBA, you, 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 you do something significant, now you're just living in the past. Oh, I once did this and I once did that. I used to be this and I used to be that. I once scored four touchdowns in high school. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Mr. Hal Bundy, right? Look, you still have a future. You still have the ability to make an impact. So don't let uh, achieving one goal keep you from keeping on and keeping on and doing more and doing more. Look, I'm here to tell you that both scenarios are certain death. But the good news is there's an antidote. And that antidote is in keeping your dreams alive and making better choices. Each choice carries a consequence with it and a motivation behind it. For dreamers, there lies the motivation. Dreams drive decisions. And if you don't have a dream, your decisions are going to be lukewarm. If you have a dream, the choice is always easier to make as long as you remember that you have core values. Your core values represent kind of like your GPS in life. It's a navigation system that always keeps you on track. And if you're always making choices based on your core values, you might come off course a little bit, almost like a rocket flying to space. It's constantly adjusting its, 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 its trajectory. You're going to make adjustments based on your core values, and those adjustments are your decisions. And as long as you remember your goals, as long as you remember your dreams, as long as you remember your core values, what is important to you, what defines you, what makes you the person you want to be, as long as your decisions stay on course based on your core values, based on your dreams, based on your goals, you're going to do very well. I want to say people that don't dream aren't driven. I'll end today with just a little quote. The world needs dreamers and the world needs doers. But above all, the world needs dreamers who do. Dream it and do it. And when necessary, redefine and redo. You can do this. Dust off your cape and meet me on the roof. Guys, I hope you found today's information of value. I enjoy speaking with you. I enjoy bringing this to you. If you'd like some more information on this, go ahead and pick up the book, You Vs. You by Todd Cahill. You can find it at Barnes & Noble. You can find it at Amazon, on Amazon. This information was from uh, chapter three of his book, um, You Vs. Your Dreams. So enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Love you all. 